Roger rushes into the abandoned house in search of his little brother. It begins to grow quiet. Just then, he heard a voice. He runs and the voice grows louder and louder. Until, boom! He falls to the floor. And right in front of him was a strange figure. A dark figure with a giant eyeball for a head and lobster claws as hands. And the worst part, he was wearing a suit. Why was he wearing a suit? Because he was a lawyer! <gasps> Two minutes until your courses begin, rule number 75 must be prompt to invite an event. Thank you everyone for coming out. Come back tomorrow to hear the rest. Everyone has their essays on postmodernism prepared for the rest of the class. Sam Adjoit and Vance Grayvine. Since you both fail to be prompt, which one of you would like to present? Sam Adjoit, why don't you wow us with your essay? Excuses, Mr. Adjoint. No! No, there was... <laughs> what happened? You fainted. You pointed at the window, and you fainted. Detention. Your fainting was a distraction to the rest of the class. Detention? Right. Um. Let me guess. First time in detention? Sadly, no. I'm a frequent offender because of my disregard for the rules. Where's Miss Kranskin? She broke a rule and got decimated. She got caught telling stories. I mean, fabrications. <laughs> I like your hair. It's very playful, but aggressive. Uh, thanks. I like your bracelet. It's earthy. Uh, you don't like my bracelet, do you? No, not at all. You're a weird one, Sam Adroit. I like you. Dude, you should have saw your face when you fainted. <laughs> oh my god. Mr. Stickler thought you simulated some performance to try and get up the presentation. Vance. Can I tell you a secret? 
What? <gasps> Is it that Maxie's developing a crush on me? I knew it! What? No. I think I saw something from one of my stories when I fainted. I don't know. Maybe I should tell Mr. Stickler. We had an agreement. Telling Mr. Stickler will reveal that we were breaking the rules and telling fabrication stories. I don't care. But I do know that we'll both end up in detention if anyone finds out. You're right. I just know that I saw. Look at me. You're dehydrated. Get some water. Uh, okay. You might be suffering from a chemical imbalance, maybe an iron deficiency. For all we know, it could be early onset Alzheimer's. Oh no, I'm talking to myself. You're okay. Sam, you're okay. Boom! Ah! Stay back, girl! What are you? Uh, I'm a lawyer, remember? Must be hallucinating. Oh, let's play detective! Listen to ass, see? Why do you have two eyeballs? Isn't that a little excessive? How, how did you come to life? Same as anyone. Two unicorns came together and threw glitter at each other, then I appeared. Boom! Keep it down, butt muncher. Fiona, get in here. Tell him! to get out of my room. Your poster of a waffle? Get out, waffle. You're scaring my brother with your high-starch content. What? You can't see him. See who? The giant eyeball head from my stories. Are you telling fabrications? What? No. Keep your voice down. You keep your voice down! I am keeping my voice down. Evening meal will begin in two minutes. Rule number 75, must be prompt to invited events. You better tread lightly, Sam. She seems lovely. I should go, so just stay here, okay? Got it! What? No. Stay here. Staying right here. Do not leave the room. I will not leave the room. Do not move until I return. What are you doing? You said, do not move till I return. How was everyone's day? Exceedingly pleasant. I watered the grass today. It was exhilarating. Sounds delightful. What about you, Fiona? Mildly average. I did an essay on education retention. Sounds like quite the read. What about you, Sam? Uh, it was... Sam? It, it was... Uneventful. Uh, uneventful. Uneventful? Elaborate. Nothing happened. It was bland. Nothing happened. Um, it was bland? Sam, you seem perturbed. Did something happen? I, I, uh, 
Miss Cranskin was decimated. Rule number 204, the events that have happened will remain in the past and will not be reiterated. It's fine, dear. Sam, you understand that speaking of Miss Cranskin is obstructing the rules. And obstructing the rules is obstructing the rules. I just thought we could talk about what happened. Sam, you are not permitted to speak of this. Why not? Do you understand that you too could be put under scrutiny and be decimated for reiterating this information? Rule number 871, speak at an appropriate volume when communicating with your authorities and peers. Sam, you are not authorized to speak of this again, nor will you discuss this conversation amongst your peers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? Do you understand what I am saying? <coughs> Dear? Did you kill him? What? No! I would never do you want me to? No! I don't know. What did you do? Well, he made you mad, so I punished him. <laughs> you have to admit, it was kind of fun. You're being a distraction. You're under my care after your courses. Arrive home promptly. Got it, butt muncher? Say we have some real fun. Can't. I have my courses. Oh, we'll poop on a popsicle. Skip it. Come on. What do you say, Mr. Adroit? Mr. Adroit. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Stickler. Rule eight five four must remain in concise observation of your surroundings, peers, and your authority figures. That. Sir, would be me. Right. My apologies, Mr. Stickler. Just so you know, Mr. Stickler, 
I'm not apologetic. <sighs> Associates, I would like to present Santa Joy with the finale of Giant Eye Boy. Right. Okay. The finale of Giant Eyeball Head. Well, it starts with a Giant Eyeball Head. Right. You have been participating in the activity of fabrications. I have been given instruction to take you to the authorities. I don't have time for this! I don't have time for this! Rule number 871. Speak at an appropriate volume so you can be heard and understood by your peers and your authorities. Fredericks, what do you get out of all of this? Because from my observation, your lack of imagination leaves you with a sickened desire to punish people. That's it, Sam Adroit. There is a fine line between authorities and subordinates, and you just crossed it. Consider yourself reprimanded. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like murder? I like murder. Do you like blood bats? I love blood bats. Stupid! Detention! What? Oh, no. Oh, you can stay if you like. I find it's a good place to hide out from all those rules. Miss Joyce? Can I trust you with something? I love trust! I tell stories to the other kids. I hate trust! I told a story about a figure with a giant eyeball for a head, claws for hands. Who was fashioned in a suit? Why a suit? Because he was a lawyer. Oh no! Yes. And it might seem odd, but that figure is coming to life, and he wants to hurt people. Okay, okay, okay! Everyone, we gotta calm down now! 1,800 hours, fifth moon of the latter day, 1970, 1970. How did it end? The story, how did it end? I found that with stories, the character follows a particular pattern of his plot line. If we know what a take place, we can predict his endeavors, his objectives, hence stop him. Um, I never finished it. There is no ending. Wonderful, fantastical, amazing! We can end this now before it continues, huh? Yes. You, you're the key. You started the 
story, you must finish it. Go. I... I can't. Of, of course, course you can! Why not you, partner? There was a strange figure. What are you doing? A dark figure with a giant eyeball for a head, and lobster claws for hands. You really think this is going to work? And the worst part, he was wearing a suit. I'm going to be in your head all day, all night, Samikins! Roger's fear was tingling through his body. You can never get rid of me! Never! But all he could think about was his brother. Oh. You're going to be nothing without me, because you're nothing. He got up slowly and looked at him straight in the eye. La 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 la, I can't hear you, no one can hear you. Brave the giant eyeball heads glares. Stop it. Stood up. I said stop it. And took off <laughs> the giant stop. eyeball no. heads. Stop. Oh!